This has become a weekend ritual in parts of Hong Kong. Street battles breaking out between anti-government protesters and police. But this was one of the most intense rounds of violence since the protests began almost three months ago. The day had started peacefully. The police rejected an application from organizers to hold a rally. And initially it was just small religious and student groups that defied the ban. We need to pray for Hong Kong. So there's, I find some of them are Christian. They, they, they also have the same idea. But the numbers grew throughout the day as people paralyzed some of the city's busiest roads, turning them into walkways. By doing so, they risked arrest, but there was safety in numbers. They shouted their familiar cries of stand with Hong Kong and left their mark as they went. But it was inevitable that this day would develop like so many others have in Hong Kong recently. The violence started when some people stopped at the offices of the government, which adjoins Hong Kong's parliament. This is a building that they stormed back on the 1st of July, so clearly once they came to this building, uh, the police were in no mood to muck around, no mood to allow them to stay here and throw things at the building, so the tear gas started fairly quickly. The protesters have developed a relatively new and dangerous tactic of throwing petrol bombs, along with bricks and other objects. On the other side, police fired tear gas and deployed water cannon, this time laced with dye, to try to mark those who had broken the law. Eventually, those demonstrating moved on, but their fight wasn't over. The protesters have retreated from the area around the Legislative Council complex, but not very far, coming to a place close to the headquarters of the Hong Kong police. They've blocked this road, this intersection here, and set fire to their barricade, taking things to a new level. Their actions were designed to send a clear message to the police and the government. Far from being afraid, they're intensifying their campaign, and in doing so, the city's crisis is worsening. Wayne Hay, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong. Adrian Brown joins us live from Hong Kong. Adrian, what does it appear that the strategy is for, for the chief executive, Carrie Lam, in, in dealing with the protests, which clearly are not letting up? Well, to be honest, Rochelle, I don't think she has a strategy right now. Uh, last week, she hinted that the Hong Kong government might be prepared to invoke emergency powers that were last used in this city in 1967 during the anti-colonial protests, where more than 5,000 people were actually arrested. We're up to about 1,000 arrests so far during this uh, round of protests. She has, I think, really uh, given a firm sort of indication, as I say, that these powers might be selectively used. For instance, uh, she would uh, bring in powers that would prevent, prevent professors wearing face masks, that it would prevent professors, you know, gathering to protest at all. But we haven't got to that stage yet. Today, the protesters are planning to once more target uh, Hong Kong's international airport, which, of course, was targeted a couple of weeks ago, which led to hundreds of flights being cancelled, leading to a lot of disruption for travellers coming into Hong Kong and getting out of Hong Kong. I think the plan is to carry out what's known as a stress test. And that's, this means that the protesters will try to somehow either block the main expressway leading to Hong Kong airport or to sort of try to fill buses or, or train carriages to, to sort of crowd them out with protesters. But I think, you know, that's a strategy that's almost certainly going to lead to, you know, the possibility of more confrontation with the police because we are seeing the police starting to harden their tactics now. And I think they're starting to go after people they suspect of wanting to carry out a protest. So I think we're seeing the police now being a lot more kind of proactive. And, you know, the violence we saw last night was some of the worst violence we've seen Rochelle during the past 13 weeks, particularly on the Hong Kong subway system when the police stormed into a carriage and started clubbing passengers. And we don't know whether all those passengers were in fact protesters. So yes, the violence is increasing on, on both sides. So considering that things do seem to be escalating, what is the latest word out of Beijing? Well, overnight, uh, not surprisingly, given just how serious the violence was on Saturday night, because one of the new tactics of the protesters is to set fire to barricades. And there were multiple fires across Hong Kong last night. Well, Xinhua, 
the official news agency, has warned that Hong Kong once more is reaching a very critical stage and has said that Hong Kong is in danger of becoming a war zone. As to what Beijing does next, well, I think it's possible, and this is a personal view, that the leadership has taken the decision that perhaps it's now too late to send in the PLA, too late to send in paramilitary police, because in a few weeks' time, you know, President Xi Jinping will be overseeing the most important event, the most important celebration this year, which is the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. I think they've decided that they'd rather live with what they know at the moment, which is, you know, continuing protests every weekend, rather than have, you know, a picture of Chinese troops you know, marching and patrolling in the center of Hong Kong. Okay. Adrian Brown with the latest from Hong Kong. Thank you, Adrian.